due to environmental concerns, a quest for engine efficiency has spawned the need for engine downsizing while retaining certain marketing demands in both performance and economy figures. For this, manufacturers have resorted to downsizing and is compensated with a turbocharger, supercharger or both to maintain good figures. The follow-through of this is also seeing less number of cylinders per engine being used. Manufacturers turn to modular specification to target better margins for business reasons. Modular specifications here means opting for a fixed cylinder size for cost-effective repetitive manufacturing while sharing it with different engine configurations for different models of a certain brand or even shared among brands. For example, a 500cc cylinder times 2 for a 1 litre engine, 3 cylinders for 1.5 litres, 4 cylinders for 2 litres and a 6 cylinder variant for 3 litres and 8 cylinders for 4 litres. All sharing the same valve, piston, injector and connecting rod, saving lots of time on computation in the manufacturing process that would do with a copy-paste job when completing an engine design and semantics. We have heard over and over again that some manufacturers are discarding certain types of engine in their lineup to go with the times. In most cases, the casualty is usually the naturally aspirated V12 or V10 engine. We will be focusing on these multi-cylinders here, questioning whether it is necessary to reduce the number of cylinders relative to performance efficiency in downsizing. Because during these times, higher number of cylinders tend to give the impression that it is less efficient. Of course, straight off line, having more cylinders is a costly option because it has to go through more manufacturing processes and complexities that would lend itself to more weight as well. However, there is a meeting point in cost where pushing an engine with less cylinders to meet certain power targets where more expensive materials and complex detailed manufacturing processes are needed to hit those targets that higher number of cylinder engines can achieve without being as critical. Ducati's Super Quadro 1285cc V-twin or L-twin, a case in point. To rev those high mass 160mm 4.56 inch pistons to extremes at over 11,000 rpm and extract 162.6 horsepower per litre requires the use of exotic materials in many of its parts like titanium connecting rods and valves. These larger parts need to be more intricately machined to remove as much mass as possible while retaining as much strength as possible. The manufacturing process for exotic materials will also make it even more expensive. This engine is used on Ducati's top-of-the-line twin in the Panigale R Final Edition. It produces 209.4 horsepower. It has a stroke of 60.8 millimeters, giving it a bore stroke ratio of 1.9 to 1. Today, other superbikes with more cylinders can produce similar power from smaller displacement without being stretched as much. This may be the reason why contemporary Ducati broke tradition adding two more cylinders on their most powerful bikes that are now on four-cylinder engines. The four-cylinder produces very similar power to the twin but from a smaller displacement engine that is 998cc. Although the twin produces a lot more torque at 104.7 pounds per feet, at 9000 rpm to the V4S's 88 pounds per feet at 12000 rpm which reflects its 28.8% larger capacity but only 15.5% more torque.
What's very interesting here is that take the Ducati twin engine and reduce that 60.8 mm stroke to the Ducati's V4S stroke of 48.8 mm. The result will be an engine size that are very similar, which is 1023cc for the twin versus 998cc for the four. A 25cc difference. The V4S's bore is 81 mm, and with that stroke, it gets a bore stroke ratio of 1.67 bore to one stroke. It could give the impression that the V4S engine is a four cylinder update to their twin. The perfect antonym to this piece would be Honda's NR750 engine, as it is a four cylinder engine for homologation, but is specified as an eight cylinder engine. It's 32 valves, eight connecting rods, eight spark plugs, eight choke intake, and eight exhaust ports scream eight cylinders. In its four cylinder oval piston form, it's 102 mm wide, 50.6 mm long oval bore, times 42 mm stroke would equate to a conventional round piston bore size of 75.28 mm to get 747.7 cc. Its 42 mm stroke in eight cylinder form requires a bore of 53.3 mm to achieve the same 747.7 cc. In eight cylinder guys, its bore stroke ratio would be 1.24 to 1 and its four oval cylinder form, it would be 1.79 to 1. Notice that even Ducati's Super Quadro Twin has a larger bore and stroke ratio than the NR750. It still performs in the lower RPM range even with better state of tune as it has slightly lower horsepower per litre. This is evident that eventually it comes down to piston speed that characterizes an engine as the Super Quadro has a much larger stroke than the NR750. So that being the antonym, let's look at engines with more cylinders for a stroke normally specified for a larger per cylinder engine. The NR engine has a larger bore area and now we focus on larger stroke per cylinder instead. Let's start off with a square bore and stroke engine which is Toyota's 3SGE as an example. It has a bore and stroke that is 86 mm for four cylinders, giving a total cubic capacity of 1998 cc. With that 86 mm stroke, the piston speed at 8000 rpm is 22.9 meters per second. Now, double the amount of cylinders for the same total cubic capacity, but with the same 86 mm stroke, and we get the same piston speed at the same rpm. This means we have an eight cylinder engine, but operating similarly to its four cylinder contemporary in the RPM range. To achieve the same cubic centimeter, its bore now is smaller at 60.81 mm, giving an under square bore stroke ratio of 0.7 to 1. For reference, a square eight cylinder engine with a displacement of 1998 cc will need a bore and stroke of 68.28 mm. This means it would achieve the same piston speed at higher RPM. At this point, the 8-cylinder engine is at a disadvantage in manufacturing cost, complexities, lending itself to being heavier, but is it less efficient? Let's take this to the minimum amount of cylinder, and that is a single-cylinder engine with the same 86 mm stroke. This example is to make any differences even clearer. A single-cylinder version would need a bore size of 172 mm, or 6.77 inches to get 1,998 cc, and on the other end, a 12-cylinder engine with 86 mm of stroke would need a bore size of 49.65 mm to get 1,998 cc. Interestingly, the bore stroke ratio would be exactly 2 to 1 for the single cylinder, not so far off Ducati's 1,285 cc twin engine mentioned earlier. This would mean it would have similar operating speeds as a 3SGE engine, even though it is double in being over square, while on the other end, a 12 cylinder variant with similar operating speed potential would have a bore stroke ratio of 0.57 bore to one stroke. On the single cylinder example, some deficiencies of running less cylinders for a given engine displacement are immediately clear. One is its much larger combustion chamber. Combustion dynamics for a large space is compromised where the ratio between central spark and its surrounding area becomes greater. To get burn, lower air fuel ratio or more fuel is needed for an engine to operate 
so it would be exposed to the spark area. Technology such as turbulent jet ignition would make a lot of difference for larger combustion chamber engines, but for now that technology does have issues. With multiple cylinder engines, the combustion chamber is divided and confined to smaller spaces. The same total displacement would be operating with the advantages of smaller combustion chambers, which is more efficient. The divided size of these smaller combustion chambers atomization is in a much smaller confinement, making it more sensitive to spark. This makes it able to run leaner mixtures. A simple proof of this efficiency is that smaller displacement engines can run much higher RPM without having issues on combustion efficiency compared to larger bore engines. Swirl issue will also arise when a larger bore is coupled with a smaller stroke. The air needs to cover a large area, but its stroke limits the time relative to bore size and energy. This will be an issue at low engine load operation. The intake speed will also be affected having less ports, but compensated by size that larger intake ports will not help with swirl unless at high operating speeds. On the multiple cylinder engine, the total intake volume will still be the same, but spread further across the engine cycle. The single cylinder engine will be lacking in taking advantage of synchronizing intake and exhaust pulses and pressure waves as well. This is an area where multi-cylinder engines benefits. The more the cylinders, the more uniform pressure is to maintain velocity spread across a four-strokes engine's 720 degree cycle. This is an improvement on volumetric efficiency. Dividing an engine to add more cylinders that are smaller also takes stress away from the engine's main components as it would allow lighter pistons, connecting rods and smaller valves that are lighter. The advantages of having more cylinders can benefit when it comes to improving engine vibrations as well, a trait more synonymous with higher end engines. The spread in cubic capacity also means the spread in noise, where instead of having noise concentrated in less firing order for the same given engine size, making an engine louder, more cylinders would be quieter. The broken up total exhaust valves play its role here. Noise, vibrations and harshness would be reduced. Here we can see that specifying an engine in a way can make it perform the same, if not better, by adding more cylinders yet maintaining the same targeted area of use like a six-cylinder engine with measurements more akin to a four-cylinder engine. It is cast aside on the basis of cost when modular systems are planned on a much larger scale for business reasons. However, this is definitely sacrifices. Character, flair, feel and flavor of an engine certainly has an impact on experiencing a vehicle. There are those who even see it as the beating heart of a car, even more so for motorcycles, when an engine configuration and sound is an equivalent to recognizing a brand. Compromising this has had some manufacturers criticized. A good example is with Porsche's Boxster Cayman platform, when they switched from six cylinders to four cylinders and then returned to six. Its flat Boxster 4 configuration was not popular at all, a marketing failure regardless of its business sense. These two elements can be separated after the acceleration all. acceleration is outstanding. Even the sound, you have to hear this engine, guys. Another one is BMW's 3 Series, which is now dominated by a series of four-cylinder engines, unlike before, when it was their legendary 6. The latter literally has made a mark for the mark, no pun intended, yet for business reasons it has been degraded to a generic four-cylinder that is there simply to move that vehicle. BMW's inline 6 is known for being smooth, its sound and power hence legendary. Engine NVH is also much more sensitive to smaller cars than larger ones. This may not be so relevant today as manufacturers are moving away from internal combustion engines and are preparing for the electric age, as now we see its transitional period in hybrids. When technology development finally allows solid-state lithium carbon silver batteries to be market feasible, it would have a major impact on reasoning why are we still using the internal combustion engine on more conventional cars. In hybrids, however, this approach is still applicable especially for exotic car brands 
whose margins are better per vehicle and rely quite a lot on reputation and heritage. Downsizing while retaining an uncompromising approach in the traditional engine configuration rather than removing the number of cylinders may be even more beneficial. It may be more expensive, but then these are expensive cars to begin with.